You are watching the chapter 17 review where I'm going to do a couple problems that use the mirror equation. So here's the mirror equation. F is the focal length. Remember that number can be negative if I am dealing with a convex mirror. DO is the distance to the object. So that O right there, that's for the object. That should always be a positive number. By definition, we say that the object is located on the shiny side of the mirror. Otherwise, it's not very useful as a mirror. Uh, but that, by definition, is always a positive number. The DI, I for image, that can be a positive or a negative number, depending on if you get a real or a virtual image. We also have M over here, magnification. And it deals with the height of the image and objects. Those are the I's and the O's again. And the distance from the mirror to the object. So let's do a problem here. Let's say that we have a light bulb that's sitting right here. Okay, so here's a light bulb. And let's say that a student takes a spoon, okay, with the shiny side of the spoon cupped toward. So this is going to behave as if it is a uh, concave. So concave mirror. So the light is going to be my object and it's going to come in and it's going to reflect out and it's going to send light and let's say that we're projecting an image onto a wall so over here you're going to see an image of this light bulb off over here onto the wall I'm going to say that the radius of curvature of this spoon is equal to 20 cm and I want to know where is the image located Okay, so I want to know di equals question mark. I also want to know the magnification. And I want to know the height of the image, question mark. So it looks like I need to give one more piece of information here. I'm going to say that this light bulb is located uh, 13 cm from the spoon. Let's go ahead and label it up. That's distance to the object. First. Radius of curvature doesn't do me any good for the mirror equation. What I really need is the focal length. The focal length is half the radius of curvature. So it's going to be 10 cm. I better put an arrow there. 10 cm is equal to the focal length. It is a concave mirror, so that is going to be a positive number. I'll reinforce that by putting positive 10 cm right there. Now we need to use the mirror equation. 1 over f, so 1 over 10 cm, is equal to 1 over 13 cm plus 1 over di. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find di. You often see me convert my numbers into meters, but as long as all of my numbers are in the same length unit, I can just keep them in here. But if I have something that's in meters, something that's in centimeters, that's going to throw this off because I won't have unit agreement. 1 over 10 cm is going to be 0 0.1. That's inverse centimeters, but I kind of like to leave the units off for a little bit when I'm doing this. 1 over 13, let me grab my calculator. 0 0.077, that's now a rounded number, plus 1 over di. Okay, I'm going to subtract this number off of both sides of the equation. So 0.1 minus 0 0.077 is now equal to 0 0.023 is equal to 1 over di. So now I want to take the inverse of both sides. So 1 over 0 0.023 is equal to, so let me write it out like this just in case you're more familiar with this. So 1 divided by 0 0.023 is equal to di now. di is equal to 43.3 repeated cm. All right, that is where my image would be located. So if I went back over here, let me use a different color here. If I went back over here and measured from my mirror all the way out to the wall that I'm trying to project my image onto, it would have to be 43.3 centimeters away for me to find a nice focused image. If I 
my wall was a little bit closer than that, I would probably get some sort of image. It just wouldn't be a focused image, but I'd see some spot of light onto the wall. Okay, so we have that taken care of. Now let's look at the magnification. I can pretty easily use this portion of the magnification equation to figure out what's going on. So I have m is equal to negative uh, di, so negative 43.3 cm, divided by my do is 13. You can see how important that negative sign becomes. This is going to be m equals negative 3.3 repeated. That's a unitless number, but that negative sign tells me that it's inverted. It's bigger, it's inverted, and it's a real image because it is inverted. Okay, so there's my m. Got that taken care of. Don't forget the minus sign. Now what I'll do is I'll use my hi and ho. So I'm going to say m negative 3.3 repeated is equal to hi, the height of the image, and the height of the object, which it looks like I never defined. So that would have to be given in this problem. So now I'm going to come back and I'm going to say, I should have done this before, I'm going to say that that's an 8 centimeter light. So I come in here and I say 8 centimeters. I do that mathematics and I find that hi is equal to negative 26.6 repeated centimeters. And that's it. I wrote our three pieces of information over here and I just want to make sure that we're making a connection for what the ray diagram would look like. So over here I'd have F, over here I'd have C. Remember C in the problem was 20 centimeters, so 20 cm right there, meaning F was at 10. I'm going to get rid of that because actually it's going to get in the way. I had my object located between the two things, so my object is somewhere here. It was at 13 centimeters, so it's between C and F. I could do a ray diagram on this to see where my object would be located, parallel in, out through the focal, so in through the focal and parallel out. And what I would find is that I would have an image that is outside of C, so it's further away than C. And did we get that? 43 is definitely further away than where C was at 20, so that worked. I find that it's inverted. My magnification is negative, so is my HI. That means it's inverted. It seems to be bigger. 26.6 centimeters is definitely larger than the original 8 centimeters. So all of these things are working out well for us. So you can always kind of use that as a check. All right, let's do another problem. I've kind of redrawn the same picture that we had before. Let's say that this student then flips the spoon around. I had an F before that was equal to 10 centimeters. When they flip the spoon around, this is now a convex mirror. And in fact, they would have to flip their body around. I'm drawing my eye up here. So my eye would peer into the back of the spoon over here, and I would see an image somewhere back there behind the mirror of my light bulb. And on the previous problem, I would have had my eye sitting over here somewhere, right, um, looking and seeing the, the wall. But all right, on this problem, we're going to keep the same information that we had. So this was 13 centimeters cm. This was an 8 cm light bulb. And we flip the spoon around. We're going to assume the same radius of curvature that we had before. But now that it's a convex, you cannot forget that you need to put in a minus sign. A convex mirror has its focal point on the back side of the mirror and so it needs that minus sign. That is the only way that the mirror equation has any idea that you're dealing with a convex mirror instead of concave. All right, let's see where the image would be located. What is di? This time I go in with 1 over f and it's 1 over negative 10 cm is equal to 1 over 13 cm just like before plus 1 over di. This is now negative 0 0.1 inverse centimeter is equal to the number that we had before was 0 
that's also inverse centimeter, plus 1 over di. I'm going to subtract this to the other side of the equation. This now becomes negative 0 0.177 inverse centimeter is equal to 1 over di. Put that di over here in the numerator. Take this thing down into the denominator. So we're just inversing all of this. And I find that di is equal to, it is 1 over negative 0 0.177 or di is equal to negative 5.65 centimeters. Again, that negative sign means that it's behind the mirror. It means that it is a virtual image. That's what I would expect out of a convex mirror. I can go through and find the magnification. The magnification is going to be negative from the equation and then negative 5.65 cm over positive 13 cm. The object is always a positive number. The DO is always a positive number. This is a magnification of positive 0 0.43. It's positive, which means that it's upright. It's a virtual image. And it is less than 1, though, so that means that it's getting smaller. How small exactly is it? I have 0 0.43, that's my m, and I'm using the h's now. So I had said that it was an 8 centimeter dealy, and I have hi. From here, I find that hi is equal to positive 3.48, uh, we'll call it centimeters. Okay? And let's verify our information with a ray diagram. So I'd have my center of curvature back there. This was this was like 20, 20 cm to get out to C there. And then F is located at the location of 10 cm, except again it has to be a negative sign for the focal length inside of that equation. And I had my my arrow, my object, my light bulb sitting out 13 centimeters away. When I do this ray diagram, I go in parallel and I go out through the focal, which would line up there. Then I go in through the focal and out parallel. And my object would be located right here. It's smaller. In fact, it is less than half the size. It is located behind the mirror because of my negative sign that's there. Notice that it is less than 10. That's a good thing. I can't actually end up with an object out here. That just, that just doesn't work on a convex. It has to still be in front of the focal. And so it is closer in than 10, which is good. Uh, and the height of the object is a positive number. That's good because it is still upright, but it is smaller than it originally was. So that works. Hopefully that makes sense to you, and if you think you got it, let your computer know.